Luke, to really understand something, sometimes I like to look at it exactly in reverse. Um, if, especially if I want to believe something, I, I like to look at what the other side is, because maybe I'm seeing things because of my own rose-colored or other colored glasses. Um, so with fine-tuning, which has uh, you know, very significant implications, potentially, uh, for things beyond science, if that be the case, so I know you have a, uh, a theistic uh, explanation for fine-tuning, but if I asked you uh, to describe the potential uh, pitfalls or problems in fine-tuning, what, what, what are the challenges that you see that are legitimate challenges? I'm sure you have answers to them, but I'd like to understand what those challenges are. Well, from the very basics, the, the pure mm -hmm. physics of fine-tuning, you start with the question, what would happen if I change this number. And one of the things we've discovered in, in recent years, some of my own work actually, is that some of the cases were, we didn't quite work out properly from the start. So there's a very early paper actually in the early 70s saying you know, if, if, if two protons could stick together, in our universe they won't, but if they could, all sorts of disasters would happen. Actually, when you go back and look in detail about what would happen, let's go you know, actually make a model of a star that has this property, it turns out actually it's not a disaster, the star will just sort of adapt itself. And so that's not a case of fine tuning, making two protons stick together doesn't seem to be the disaster we thought it was. So there's, there's issues there about, you've got to be careful with the physics, you've got to do the physics right straight away. So there's, there's worries there about physics, but there's, again, a lot of the cases are on such solid ground that these, these worries aren't, uh, it's very unlikely they'll all be t overturned that way. I think it's just turned out in recent years, stars are more robust than we gave them credit for. Okay, so, so that's, that's one. That's there's, there's, there's one. Uh, one of the things you also need to do, uh, sort of from the other way, is uh, in certain fine tuning cases that you compare the value of the constant in our universe to the range it can have. But that's not quite the right comparison. If you if you throw a dart at a dartboard and it hits the middle, it hits the bullseye, you say that's amazing. To, to sort of show that that's amazing, you don't compare the distance from the dart to the bullseye yeah. to the, where the bullseye is, right? It, the, the, the right comparison is the size of the bullseye to the size of the wall. So actually, we, we need that understanding of what's the set of possibilities. So one way to, to people have sometimes written off fine-tuning is saying, hey, it's only a factor of 10 from where the constant is, or it's only a couple of percent, or it's only this or the other. But actually what they should be comparing is the, the size, the range that can make life to the total possible range, and that's where you really see the fine-tuning. Yeah, I, I, can, uh, I, I can challenge that because there's a, a hit, isn't there a hidden assumption in that that the, 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 the non-fine-tuned space, that your big wall, Yeah that there's something about, about the uh, characteristics of that other space that, that you're giving equal weight that in the deep laws would not have equal weight because it's incompatible in some fundamental way. And so uh, by, by, by claiming fine tuning because you've hit a, a, a bullseye within that bullseye on a huge wall yeah. which seems like fine tuning, but the other, the characteristics of much of that wall would sort of be even logically impossible if you really understood the deeper structure. Yeah, so that's one, so Einstein had this dream that one day we'll write down this theory where there'll be no free parameters and it'll all totally lock itself into place and there'll be nothing left to change. So that's, that's interesting, we don't have any theories like that. No, and, and in fact, as time goes on, that seems less and less likely. Yeah. I, I, we understand that, but, but what I'm saying is maybe a hybrid between the two. I'm not sure how to, how to say this properly, but it, I, I'm not saying that you know, it was one deep law that forces everything, because if that's the case, then sure, then their fine-tuning, in a sense, disappears if you have an well, absolute quite, law. Yeah. I mean, then you have to say, why is life like that? But, but then you have an, if everything is, is sort of a, 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 almost a necessity, that, that's a different character, but I'm saying that maybe there's some deeper uh, uh, kind of uh, related structureness, right? And, and that eliminates all of those other possibilities as impossible to work. And so your 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 uh, wall, well, you think it's like you think the bullseye is here and the wall is like this. Yeah. The bullseye by here and the wall may be like that. Right. 
So, I mean, there's, there's two things to say about that. Within the physics of fine tuning, which is what we're sort of here to discuss at this conference, we're really just exploring the theories we have. Right. On a more broad scale, if we're trying to think through, say, naturalism, the idea that, that the physical universe is all there is, right. if we're trying to think through that, uh, when you think through an idea, you would like to know what sort of possibilities the idea leaves open and where we are within that set of possibilities. So a very simple example of that would be if I find, if I see, you know, uh, closed circuit TV footage of the, the robbers going into the bank and they, mm -hmm. they go up to the safe and they punch in the 12-digit code the first time and get in. Uh, if you have two theories about that, they knew the code, it's an inside job, versus they walked up and guessed the code. <laughs> One of the things you need to think about that guess the code option is there's a huge set of possibilities of what they could have punched in right. and only one of them gets in. So if we're thinking about naturalism in those terms of what's, what's the set of ways that right, the universe right, right, could have right, been, right. it seems like the best handle we can get on that at the moment is to say let's take the best theories of our universe we have and look at the possibilities they open up. Okay. And so where are we within that set of yeah. possibilities? Yeah, that's and, legitimate. So one, one interesting uh, way in which the problems don't go away if you get a deeper theory is take, take string theory, for example. Um, it's supposed to be this theory with, with no free numbers in the equation itself, so it's all settled. But what was discovered in the last sort of 10 to 15 years is all of that freedom to change things just got moved over from the equation itself into the solution to that equation, the way the universe actually is. So it, it's, in, 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 it's not a constant of nature anymore, it's an initial condition, really, a boundary condition, and whatever. it could be a huge number. It's yeah. To the 500, they claim. So whatever. all you did was relabeled your problems, yeah, yeah, but yeah. you've still got the wall. Right, The right, wall right. is still there. No, no, for sure in that case. For sure in that case. I'm, I'm asking about a different thing. All right, another, what's another potential problem? Uh, Fine-tuning is criticized because it says when you do your analysis, you're only varying one thing at a time. Uh, as opposed to a multivariate kind of analysis that may be extremely complex, that if you take one of the 26 or 22 parameters and you vary that, you'd have a, 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 a narrow range for fine-tuning. But if you did two, three, five at the same time and knew, knew what to do, you'd have a much broader range because one could rebalance the other. And right. you're cheating by only, by only uh, uh, varying one in your fine-tuning analysis. So actually, when fine tuning gets explained to you know the broader audiences, we vary one at a time because that's easier to explain. It doesn't happen in the scientific literature. So in actually most of the papers, so there's a, a, a very interesting case, uh, a very interesting paper by Max Tegmark and, and another run, other authors. Actually, I should mention Anthony Aguirre, Martin Rees, who's you know the astronomer royal, and Frank Wilczek, who's a yeah. who's a um, you know, Nobel Prize winning particle physicist. All our friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's a high powered yeah. paper. They look at cosmology and they vary seven parameters at a time. Uh, it, you know, back of the envelope calculations for the most part, but you know, good back of the envelope calculations. Uh, so it's just not true that the, the fine tuning varies one variable at a time. There are papers where uh, actually in our book we show sort of three parameters at a time. You have this three dimensional space and you start mm. carving off bits that don't work and you find, yeah, you, you know, sometimes the life permitting bit is not a, a simple blob, it actually has a, a sort of shape to it, but it's still a very small fraction of the total. And you can, you, you've then ruled out whether there's any special directions where you know there's a, some oasis of life over here that we missed because we only looked in one direction. Uh, so far as we can tell, that oasis has never turned up, however many variables we've changed. Uh, another argument deals with uh, a misunderstanding of, of what probability means in this, uh, in the whole fine-tuning uh, analysis. Uh, uh, one aspect, this is a very broad sense of probability, one aspect says in a multiverse, because there are a lot of infinities that seem to be coming around, that uh, probability is, uh, is almost destroyed as a concept to work with. Hmm. And so you're, you're throwing around probabilities, but, if you're, but a multiverse kind of undermines that. Uh, because infinities, you can't deal with pro in, uh, probabilities in the same way. Every, everything, no matter what, if it's conceivably if it's not impossible, it'll yeah. happen an infinite number of times. That's the, uh, the kind of the uh, counterintuitiveness of, of infinity. Um, uh, that's one issue in, of, uh, of probabilities. Uh, 
but there, there are other aspects of, of misunderstanding how to use simple probabilities in calculations of fine tuning. So certainly fine tuning and especially the multiverse does push our, our understanding of, of uh, probabilities to their limits. Uh, I think for the multiverse one of the problems is um, it's when we deal with infinities often in physics there's some sort of limit that we're doing so we're really dealing with very very large cases but for the multiverse supposedly the infinity is sort of all there at a particular time and those are much harder to deal with um, at worst I think the the conclusion of that would be certain multiverse models don't make any predictions at all and so that would restrict our attention to the ones we which can handle their infinities if you want to put it that way um, more broadly there's, there are different views of probabilities in sciences. To, so you could have the probability you find in quantum mechanics if it's really indeterminate, where it's a real physical property of the system, mm -hmm. what you might call uh, an objective chance maybe. Uh, um, but there's a, a broader perhaps sense of probability where it's about credences, which are the, what philosophers call credences, which means how plausible do I think a certain idea is? And it's really what, a, what an ideal agent would say about how plausible an idea is. It's like trying to generalize on, on logic. There's not sort of just A and B. There's you know, degrees of plausibility in between. And I think with credences, we can understand a lot of these, these fine-tuning arguments. It's not the case that we're, we're just, sorry, uh, we're not saying that there's some sort of universe-generating mechanism out there that's producing them. We're just trying to say, how do I think about the universe?